Here I have two RHEL HT1205 sub amplifiers. One of them works, the other will not come out of standby. Let's see if we can correct that. We'll start with a demonstration. First the functional amplifier. The status LED transitions from red to white and you can hear the relay engage. And now the faulty amplifier. You can see the status LED does transition from red to white momentarily, then goes back to red, and we never hear the relay engage. So let's get to work. Let's go over the layout. There's only four boards in here. On the top right is the main AC in board. On the very bottom is the power supply board. Above that, the audio amplifier board. And on the left, the input and volume adjust board. After a quick visual inspection, it's pretty obvious where the problem lies. Let's take a closer look. These are the two high voltage smoothing capacitors for the audio amplifier board. Not only are they both bulged on the top, but this one is showing some leakage. Not this black, that's just glue, but the yellow is leakage. This is likely happening for two reasons. Number one, although this is a class D amp, class D amps are very efficient. These are both located right next to the heat sink. Any increased temperature will reduce the lifespan. And number two, and more important, the quality of cap RHEL chose to use in their amps is very poor. M-I-R-A-N, Moran branded, never heard of them, cheap garbage. That's the story for all the large caps. These smaller caps are branded Econ D, E-C-O-N-D, also never heard of them, very likely cheap garbage, very unfortunate. So this whole thing will need to be recapped. That's very likely gonna be the resolution. I'm gonna start with the audio amplifier board. We'll need to remove these two connectors and the high voltage connectors. And then there are four screws mounting the board to the front faceplate. We'll take a closer look. Here's the amplifier removed. Supposedly this can produce 500 watts of power. It's impressive if it's true, that is class D. It's driven by this chip. This is an S2092S from International Rectifier. And per the data sheet, it is capable of driving 500 watts. It all depends on how it's configured and what sort of components are surrounding it, and most critically, what sort of MOSFETs are used. So before this is done, I am going to remove this heat sink and take a look at those as well. To start, I'm going to remove just these two failed caps, and we'll take some measurements. I was wrong on the brand for these two caps. These are GL branded, 105 degrees C rated, supposedly. RKL series, I don't know. Maybe somebody knows that these are legitimate caps. I doubt it. I removed the outer casing from the obviously failed cap. You can see the domed top pretty easily there. Let's measure capacitance. These are 3300 microfarad caps. My meter displays in millifarad. So we're looking for around 3.3 millifarad. And 3.2 or 3300 microfarad. Close enough. That one seems okay. But what does the cap with leakage show? Fifty seven, sixty six, seventy seven, ninety, no good. Yeah. So this really isn't even a capacitor anymore. Certainly needs to be replaced, along with its friend. For replacements, 
I'll be using these Nichicon LGY series. These are specifically designed for long life, 5,000 hours at 105 degrees C, and can withstand high ripple current as well. This is exactly what you want. I'll get these installed and we can test. The replacement capacitors have been installed in the amp board and the amp board in the unit itself. The output MOSFETs used, like the chip that drives them, are also from International Rectifier. These are FP4227s, and after looking at the data sheet, I think these are more than capable. Let's plug it in and test. The status LED transitioned from red to white. It stayed white, and we can hear the relay engage. So that was it. A few more items before I wrap up. First, in the case that it's helpful for troubleshooting for someone in the future, I did measure the voltages you can expect to see from the two connectors. So this first I labeled as J2PS for power supply, and I denoted this as pin 1 and this, which I labeled J2 amp, and I denoted this as pin one. And finally, maybe you have one of these amps and it's not functioning right, but these two caps don't appear bulged or show any signs of leakage, what else can you check? Certainly I would check all of the remaining electrolytic capacitors. There's a bunch on the amp board, a whole bunch down here on the power supply, and a bunch more over here on the input board. Look for the same thing, bulged tops, signs of leakage. If you don't see anything there, I would look at the semiconductors, specifically the heatsink mounted semiconductors. So we have our MOSFETs on the amp board up here. Look for shorts on those. We have some heatsink mounted devices on the power supply, probably more transistors. We also have some hidden down here. I'd also look at this bridge rectifier in the power supply section, look for shorts there. And then we also have some voltage regulators hidden in here. I believe these are plus and minus 12 volts. Look for shorts on those as well. That'll do it. Thanks for watching.